I'm still travelling south, but I've crossed New Zealand to come to the Kaipara. It's an area of mangrove swamp and estuary and mud and very difficult to navigate. So I, I've been offered a lift, which I hope will take me to a phenomenon that I really want to see. My, my transport is a product of today's innovative Kiwi can-do attitude. Developed here, it allows us to bounce over some rough terrain. And you can take this vehicle almost anywhere in an off-road situation. Does, Correct. Does it cope with deep mud, because we're in estuary territory? We're four-wheel drive, yeah. so within the limits of any normal four-wheel drive vehicle, we can go in the same places. Except that this four-wheel drive is heading off-limits. And those four wheels fold away. Okay, well, we're going a bit too fast to be sitting ducks. You've got to remember to put those wheels down. No, only thing I need to do. No, of course, I understand that, but, but have you ever come to the shore and thought, oops, I forgot that? I wouldn't admit to that. At the very least, I've avoided the main road. I've avoided all roads, as far as I can see. And here we are. Dry shot at the miraculous Gibbs Farm. Instead of trying to be imitation Scottish landowners, today's New Zealanders are creating a striking homegrown identity in this country. And nowhere more than here. This North Island of New Zealand is routinely called a subtropical paradise. But a man called Alan Gibbs has created here his own private paradise. What is most exciting for me is that many of these pieces are by New Zealand artists. This is by Richard Thompson. It's knockout. Pieces by locals stand alongside works by leading international sculptors like Andrew Rogers. Most of them are commissions. This must be one of the most extraordinary collections of contemporary art in the world. It's impressive because when you get up close, you're overawed, and if you stand back, it sits in the landscape with such care and precision because each of these sculptures is site-specific. They weren't bought as an investment. They were bought to sit in the landscape. Like this astounding Anish Kapoor. This sculpture over here is by another New Zealander, Jeff Thompson, of A Lonely Giraffe. Although, funnily enough, it's not as lonely as you might think. I've never seen a private farm quite like this. There are animal immigrants here from every culture and continent, and they seem to be content roaming the hills and admiring the art. But the tallest keep rather to themselves. Look, I'm just going to... Because this, this is what I generally do with, with most animals, if you sort of rattle their food. These Rothschild giraffes have their own architect-designed pad. There are three males, Orly, Kajana and Flynn. I've got something for you, Flynn. Look, you know what this is, don't you? It's a carrot. <laughs> I was just going to give them to you one by one. What an extraordinary, beautiful mouth. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't. I uh, gave in to temptation to stroke your nose there, and you didn't want that. Imagine anything more irritating than having somebody feeding your bacon and eggs to you bit by bit. Yeah. He knows that I am only a temporary waiter. Well, this has been a genuinely or inspiring experience, but it's time for me to move on. Tonight, I've been invited to a traditional Māori meeting place, a marae, 